2017, Yulu is one of the largest companies in India that provide electric mobility and create sustainable cities for tomorrow. Yulu has over 10,000 electric vehicles and a user base of over 3 million people. Competing with the likes of Pounds, Vogo and Ola Electric, Yulu is committed towards providing shared, smart and eco-friendly solutions for the urban commute. It also reduces the traffic congestion and air pollution. How is Yulu able to do all this and more? Today, everything revolves around data. Yulu's success is driven by its in-house data science team, which is responsible for everything. The tech team at Yulu uses IoT, machine learning, and artificial intelligence for its operations. Starting with tracking the conditions of its e-bike, optimizing last mile delivery, predicting customer behavior and optimizing on the demands. Everything today requires data. In an exclusive, we at AIM spoke to the head of data at Hulu about how they're leveraging data and doing all of this. Did the bikes come equipped with the IoT device which sensors data about the bike's motor controller, battery level on the bike, as well as the location of the bike in real time. So that way we can track uh, which all bikes are there, in what state they are in, are they being used by customer at They are lying somewhere. So this helps us do tracking of the bikes as well. And this is a major data point that we use to, to schedule our operations. As well. So because the data is being changed by both customers as well as our in-house staff as well, field operation staff. They have responsibilities like doing some basic maintenance on the bikes on field, doing battery swapping. If let's say the battery is down, they need to replace that battery. Sometimes it happens that uh, customers leave the bike stray location. So we have to go and find such bikes. So there are several roles of uh, the operation staff and all of this is driven through data and our, we have our, our own app for tracking all of this as well. Where they can, you know, we have several uh, categories of bike in the order of, or in the priority of need, right? So urgency basically, that this bike needs urgent, right? the battery is about to go down. So we have like color code, red, green and blue, things like that. In this area, these many red bikes are there, these many green bikes are there. So this is one aspect of operation. Another major of aspect is basically rebalance. So customer, usually we park bike uh, at the point where we see that there will be more customer good for, uh, more chances of customers starting to get. They will take it and maybe go through their next destination. So we need to periodically do rebalancing of bikes from this uh, end destination to the beginning so that we maximize the chance of bikes getting so this rebalancing is also a major activity and that is also driven through our data center because we need to know how much demand will be there at a given location at a different time of time of the day and then uh, based on that we we send this data to our operations team and they can plan the rebalancing activity okay in addition to that we have we also have a large focus on what we call goods mobility this uh, delivery personnel bring deliveries for food companies or grocery companies or medicine companies or whatever. So they can take the bike for a long term rental, a seven day or a 15 day rental. And they can, during that time, they can use the bike as and when, like based on the requirement. There is no restriction there. And they can get a battery replacement when their battery goes down. So there are two ways to do that. They can go either to a Yulu zone and pick up a new bike. Or we have what we call as uh, Yulu Max stations in several parts in the city, which are small shops which have uh, battery charging. And the charging systems are also designed by you and built by you. So they can go there, get a, uh, get a charged battery, uh, deposit the discharge battery and be on there. So this system is also sending a lot of data to us. What is the state or how many batteries are there in charging state or discharge state? Uh, what is the charging level and things like that. So this also brings, uh, brings an interesting problem, how many batteries have to be supplied to a given charging station. Some of them are quite heavy in traffic and even demand, especially if they are near one of these uh, delivery uh, companies like Swiggy and all. If it happens to be near a hub of these companies, then we get the surge of demand. So these are some of the problems that we are working So uh, we have over 10 people at the moment. Our tech team itself is quite small, maybe 
50 to 60 people at the moment, including all speakers like app development, back end, DevOps, all of that. So in that, the data team is today about 10 people. Team is divided in three sections, I would say, which are not so, it's not a rigid structure at the moment. It's a very uh, flexible structure, but by and large, there are three types of responsibilities. So one is data engineering team, uh, which takes care of setting up our data platform, which includes things like figuring out what all the tools and technologies we need to use, uh, be it open source or maybe provided by the cloud provider or uh, any third party tools that you might want to use. And, and this includes all the whole data lifecycle, right from data ingestion all the way to visualization and BI tools, as well as tools that are required by data science. So this all is done by the data engineering team. And the other main responsibility that they have is obviously to set up the data list and be in charge of the data warehouse design and architecture. The next team is the data analyst team. Their main responsibility, they have two main responsibilities. One is to do decision support for all the verticals of business. And that is a significant part of the work they do because all of our business is highly data and uh, including all the founder and the senior management as well. So they are very data hungry in a sense. Uh, so that it's always some or something or else that we want to understand from our data about the customer, about the operation processes, customer behavior, if it is changing or not. And it has been especially challenging because of the pandemic. So there are several waves of COVID which are you know hitting us again and again that is impacting uh, both of our business models. Then we have to adjust very fast to changing customer behavior. So that all requires a lot of data points and a lot of analysis. So this data team is the major part uh, is that supporting that business. Other part is doing some long-term or, or a deeper analytics on uh, some of our problems. He is our battery performance. Are the batteries that we are using, are they giving us proper performance over time? Is it causing effect on our customer happiness? Okay. Other things is like, uh, uh, what is our are we spending more and more on bike maintenance over time? And how does it fare in different cities? How is the user behavior impacting this thing in Mumbai versus Bangalore? So these are some of the problems uh, this team looks at. Finally, we have the data science team and they are more, mainly working on predictive modeling and ML, ML research problems. So the two main problems I would see is one is forecasting demand at different locations that I mentioned earlier also. This year, we will also look at many more problems on the marketing side as well. See what is the best point we should send the notification for. Example. So these are some of the marketing related problems we will be looking at shortly. And this year, the scale is also going to increase a lot. So then looking at uh, battery, battery focus thing, battery supply, battery performance, all these problems we will see. Actually, we are already working on it in the near term. Hiring uh, in all three all three teams, some teams I would say, and by and large, it's uh, some some of them have some specialized requirements like data science side, but the main focus is to hire people who are interested in our domain. So uh, this domain is a bit different from uh, even if you look at similar companies like Swiggy and Zomato, because they may not be uh, owning the delivery fleet that they that the uh, partners are using, right? So we own that, so that brings in lot of issues on the, like lot of new problems on the supply chain. Side. So we need to keep track of all the inventory, all the spare parts, and we need to have a sense of how, what is the life of a spare, spare part. Some of them are simple spare parts, like, you know, mudguard and uh, bike or tire, things like that. Others are more complicated, which are the IoT devices, the bike lock that we use, it's a smart lock, it gets unlocked through the app, right? So there are Bluetooth controllers on. So all these things, uh, we need to track very carefully what is the spent on that, how long does it last for the presentation, during different seasons, how does it get impacted. So, and at the same time, the data model, although the volume of data if you look at, uh, compare it with companies like, let's say Flipkart, the volume may not be that much in terms of number of customers, but the complexity is still there because the, what I would say is the state machine is quite complex. You can have the data is getting changed from the customer side. At the same time, uh, there's a large number of field stuff which is also operating on this. So uh, that's why 
we have lot of analysis which works on the state machine uh, okay where, how the bike transfers from let's say it gets marked for as faulty then after it gets marked as faulty how long does it take to bring it to warehouse then if it's in warehouse how long does it take to get it to there and then get to go back on the road so lot of such kind of uh, of analysis is there so that's why right now focus is to hire in all three uh, all three verticals within data engineering analysis as well as data science um, yeah and we look for people who are you know somewhat interested in our domain at the same time they are curious and a bit passionate about what kind of work they so for hiring we have usually uh, an exploratory call Uh, where we go over the experience of the candidate, and we just want to figure out if the candidate, whatever they have put on their CV, we just want to understand that, and do they understand what all projects they have done? Let's say they put, they say that they have worked with uh, uh, regression before, and they mention a particular algorithm like this and this. So, do they really understand that algorithm in depth? That's what we want to know. Uh, we are not looking for a particular technology. So, even on the data engineering side. it's okay if so we are using spark but it's not like a mandatory requirement that you should come prepared with spark now we only want to know if you have good analytical skills good problem solving so in that we just want to test check if you are a good programmer and how fast you can pick up so it happened sometimes that in the first few round, uh, rounds uh, we saw that the candidate was smart but they lacked certain knowledge like they they were lacking certain knowledge about sql for example so we gave them some time and asked them to come back after the week or so and we just you know whether they they were able to pick up this during that time and they they were able to do that so then we proceeded with you know the next stage in life so it's not that uh, you need to have all these ex skills on day one of joining because even after joining the landscape is uh, of the tech on the tech side is changing really fast so even if we hire for spark it's not necessary that we will be always using spark we are always looking for better things too which can be you know make our analytics faster uh, third party tools you know big query or whatever so even after hiring it's you they will have to learn new tools and technologies on the job right so we are looking for that ability are they able to learn these things on the data science side it's the same basically we don't really look for any particular ml algorithm maybe deep learning or something uh, we just want to know whatever they have put on the cv and explain are they able to explain clearly uh, if they were decision choices involved the if you you used uh, maybe xgboost for example so why did you actually use xgboost how was the performance compared to some other models that you had we are focusing on the process before during that process did they go and experiment different things did they talk to business did do they understand the importance of the business problem they have solved or can they articulate the impact that the particular project had on this so these are some of the things we look especially on the data science side because data science needs to understand the domain and they also need to communicate with the business stakeholder the if the business comes and say okay this week the performance of the model was down then can they explain why it went down was it really a model issue or some process issue some lapse in following the process so all these things have to be articulated so we look for that in candidates that they come with they learn some tools like pandas or spark for example or maybe scikit-learn but uh, we have found that basic understanding of programming concepts is not there we we don't rely on your knowledge of uh, these tools for example. like if you know spark very well but you lack in programming then we are not going to go ahead because we are using spark today it can change any time in the future so we we need to uh, make sure that the basics are there so this is one of the things that i have noticed recent yeah, last uh, three or four really care about the problems that we are trying to solve and uh, so that is one reason that uh, people find you look to be more interesting also like i said the some of the key or i would say tech 
that Yulu owns certain technology. So that in itself is a bit different from other companies, I would say. And that brings in a lot of people who are interested. Yeah. I would say you should uh, highly consider working for Yulu because the company is going to grow. It's one of the unique companies in India which is working in this domain. And we have a very data-driven culture actually, uh, from right from the top. All of our founders are experienced entrepreneurs, so they know uh, what data points should be looked at across all the vehicles. And that is a very unique thing. I have worked in many companies in my career, which were at different stages in the data adoption. Right? I worked in OB business, which was a very high-tech company. I worked abroad. Uh, in the retail domain, e-commerce domain. So, in some companies, especially established companies, there is a struggle to convince the management of the use of data. Ki, okay, like a lot of management, you know, uh, they go by, okay, I know how the business works. You don't need to show me through, show to me through data, right? So, there's always this struggle. In case of Yulu, it's not there at all. It's the other way around. There is everybody is looking at data and try to uh, constantly optimize. So that is something unique in Yulu that I have uh, found. And it's always there's always a focus to include the data team right from the beginning of the product launch, which is also a bit uh, different from other startups or other companies, you know, where it happens at the end. The product has been designed, these are things. Then it goes to analytics and we found out, okay, there are gaps in the there are certain data points not getting captured in the process. So that is avoided. Uh, so I would say, if you really care about the working in data profession, Yulu is a good place to work. That's it from this week's Data Science Hiring. Stay tuned for more updates and insights from the data science industry.